Hey guys, it's Lisa. It's Thursday afternoon, so it's time for some more genealogy chat. So I'm excited to be with you today. I am in my office today. I'm, um, if you are new to Are You My Cousin, I want to welcome you to the Facebook page or YouTube channel, wherever you're choosing to watch the live stream, and welcome you to, to our time together today. Um, if you have not met me before, I do try to show up every Thursday to talk about, oh, just spend 20 or 30 minutes to chat about a favorite topic that's come up recently, um, share new things that are happening in the genealogy world that might help you guys out, and just get a chance to chat. So um, feel free to put comments in the comment box. I'm, I do see those as they go by, and I'll be happy to answer questions as we go along uh, um, on our time together. So, hey, oh, Melissa's here. Hey, Melissa. It's the archive lady, guys. She is tuning in from I think I say this right, Houston County, Tennessee. I'm not sure if it's Houston or Houston, Melissa. Hey, Carolyn from Glendale. So Melissa, I spent a lot of time, as you know, in Tennessee recently helping my daughter move. And let me just say, for those of you who followed me for a while, you know I'm a runner. There are some serious hills in that part of North Tennessee that I was in. I think everywhere I went, it felt like I was uphill all the time. But it was still, it was great. It was beautiful in Tennessee. Eastern Tennessee is beautiful with all the rolling hills and, and foothills of the Smokies. So yes, I really enjoyed it. Hey, Mary Jane, good to see you. Oh, you've got snow. Um, I got to see snow as I drove through the mountains, but other than that, I haven't seen any around. I take that back. There were actually a few little snowflakes. I may have counted 10 on my run the other morning. It was cold and there were just, just little snowflakes in the, in, the, in the atmosphere. So it was pretty cool. Hey, Heidi from Anchorage. Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys know snow. Obviously in North Carolina, we get excited about any snow. It can be one snowflake we're excited and we have don you're from georgia yay and dave it's good to see you again too from washington so glad that you guys could all join me so i have a couple things that i'm really excited about well i'm always excited about genealogy you guys know that um a couple things coming up so tomorrow if you are watching this live so tomorrow which is february 5th at 12 noon eastern time i am doing just kind of a master class slash training on finding our female ancestors in clubs and societies. So it is free. I would love for you guys to join me. I do need you to register though. And so let me pop that link in there real quick in the chat for you. And I will absolutely pop it in again at the end. Um, and of course, if you, for whatever reason, miss it, you know, feel free to message me or, or pop, you know, question in on the Facebook page and we will be happy to get you that as well. So let me put that in there for you. I do need you to register. It really helps me in my planning and um, the whole bit. So there it goes. Okay. Again, it is totally free. Um, I just do need registration for the planning purposes of that. So I would love to have you guys join me with that. You know, I love finding female ancestors. It's just something I just love to do. And I find myself always seeking out new sources and places to look. All right. So another thing just to think about, it is February and that means Roots Tech is this month. Can you believe it? Now, obviously it is not an in-person. It will be a virtual event. It's going to be very different than anything we've seen before, but I think it's going to be fabulous. They have been doing a phenomenal job. I mean, they really in just to put on the, um, an event, a virtual event of this size and, and, and the planning that they've done has just been phenomenal. I can't imagine the number of hours they put into this. So it is free this year. That is a big thing, guys. It is free. So you can attend. You do need to register. And here, I'll give you, I'll go ahead and give you the link for that as well. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. Um, so just hop over and register. It's free and it's going to be fabulous. They're going to, I've lost count of how many talks they're going to have in lectures. I will, um, I have one that I'll be talking about something unusual. I don't talk about a lot, but it's um, using culinary heritage I'm talking about cultural and culinary heritage and to explore your ancestors. So it, I'm really excited. It's different um, because I do think genealogy needs to be multi-sensory. So I'm excited to be doing that um, as well. They're going to have an exhibit hall and the whole bit. So I'm, I'm really excited about seeing what they're doing and how this all comes together. So love for you guys to be able to join that too. Let's see who else here, who else is here? Hey, Faye from Florida. Hey, MJ, you started researching, you're going back and verifying, slowly learning, watching from Alabama. 
MJ, I'm so glad you are welcome to, I'm so glad that you joined us and, and want to welcome you. Yeah, so just starting out, that is absolutely, you're in the right spot, hun. Um, and feel free, you know, hop over some time to the website, the Are You My Cousin website at lisalisten.com. You can read all kinds of, I think at last count, I had almost 300 articles over there. That's a lot of writing about various topics and a lot of them on strat based on strategy. So I'm really super glad that you have joined us and that you're getting started in genealogy um, with us. Hey, Flo, I'm glad you're here. Hey, Hazel, glad to see you as well. Okay, so we are, oh, and, yep. Oh, hey, Lee, I missed you there <laughs> from Pennsylvania. We are going to talk about today um, using the website. It's a free website called deadfred.com. Totally freaks my kids out, even though they're young adults. But to find old family photographs, to help perhaps identify some old family photographs and use it for helping you to date some old photo family photographs. I think a lot of folks are, are very familiar with that thread or we're, we're, we've heard about it before, but I wanted to just kind of take, really kind of take you on a little tour of the site today. I'm going to share my screen momentarily so that we can look through that and I can show you a couple of things you might not have used in their search functions before that could possibly help you out. If you guys get the email, you know that one of the, the, the posts that I kind of highlighted in the weekly email this week was actually one of my most very, it was the most popular post on my entire website. And it has to do with tips to identify old family, an old family photograph to date and identify that old family photograph. And dead fr using dead fraud is actually one of those tips. And so I thought, you know, I've never really shown you guys how to use it. I just tell people to go over there. So we are going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And guys, just so you know, here, let me, I'm going to go ahead before I do that, I just want to drop the link so that if you want to come back and watch this on replay, those of you who are watching after the fact, you'll have that link in there. But it is literally deadfred.com. What a great name, right? Oh, okay, so let me get my screen shared and we will go for it. Okie doke. I don't know that that worked. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. One, I'm almost there, guys. It's almost there, I promise. All right, let's do this. I'm a little slow on my, there we go. Okay, we're there. So this is deadfred.com. And so it's, I'm gonna see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it. It's a, oops, I didn't do it. It's a little, there you go because it comes off a little small so this is this is the site and as you can see there they have multiple ways for you can see to actually search this particular site a lot of times what people would come to dead Fred for is they would either have mystery photos in their possession so they would post them here to hopefully get them identified or make you know it could have been in their collection i've had a heard about folks who you know buy them in an antique store and put them on here to try to get them identified as well and then other times where people have just posted and posted photographs of their known ancestors to hopefully find other people other family members who might be searching as well but let's get started on search when i do a search on dead Rat, i do a couple things sometimes i'll just do a quick a quick search here if i am looking for a very specific surname but I like to actually go into the surname search with this little alphabet. So I'm going to use the surname Talbot, T-A-L-B-O-T-T, -T, which is my maiden name. And I'm going to use that to show you. So I'm going to click on the T's. And one of the reasons I like using the alphabet is that when I go in here, here you go. We've got three different spellings for Talbot because and. Ooh, sometimes this one even comes in. Sometimes that fourth one will come in. So I can pick up any of the like alternate spellings that I might not have thought to look for that I might miss on just a general search. So that's why I like to go and use the alphabet. Just a little tip there. So if I click on these, I'm actually going to go with the top first one there, the one with just one T on the end. So when I do that, I'm like, oh, wow, look, there are several, a number of photos here with the Talbot family. And fortunately, these are actually labeled. So I mean, how wonderful is that? And they give 
various amounts of information. So for some of these, we know that they're in Illinois, we have Maine, we have Massachusetts, we have names. Not always will you have quite that much information. Sometimes you might just have a surname. Sometimes you might have, um, you might not get a location, but it's very helpful because I can look at these and go, okay, I'm actually, my Talbots lived in Virginia. So these probably are not my family, or if they are, they are very, very distant. And, but it helps me kind of know what's out there. So this was a good way to go. When you click on these, just to show you, there you go. So you can click on these and get a nice, you know, a nice little um, better photograph, a, a close up to get. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So yeah, so that is a great way to search for your ancestor. All right, back over on the home page. I love the mystery photos. Now I actually like to go in here because here's the deal. If I click in here and look at the mysteries, so these are basically unidentified photographs. I can search by a surname if people aren't really sure, but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go in here and I will put in a county. So a particular county I'm looking at, maybe I'm researching, which I do, Pennsylvania County, Virginia. And I wanna see if there are any photographs in the mystery that have been identified as that area, but not necessarily the person has been identified. So I can do an extremely broad search that way. And I didn't get anything. That's no fun. That's never any fun when that happens. <laughs> so uh, let's see what else we can do here. Um, maybe I needed to put in the, let me go ahead. Oh, no, we don't need, well, we can try North Carolina. Why not? Let's go for it and see what happens. Let's put in Wake County on that one. Um, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. I cannot type when I'm doing things in front of people. Here we go. Let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, nothing there. Now, I did that example earlier today, and I actually managed to get it to populate for me. So anyway, that's you can do it that way as well. You can do it search by photographer. Um, you can search by photographers, you know, in certain state and area. Let's try that and see what happens. Ah, that didn't give us anything either. All right. I'm out of luck today on that, but I do... I do try to keep up with that and try to keep that name very broad to see what I might find out there as well. And if you have a, you know, feel free, you can actually upload your own photos if you have a mystery photo here. And you can certainly do the keyword search here as well. So like if you wanted to search for a type of building or something like that, you could do that as well. Now, one of the things over here in this right hand column where they talk about the tools, we have photographers and we have annuals. Let's look at annuals first. Guys, this is, they call them annuals. It could be yearbooks, which is a lot of times what we're seeing them. We're seeing more and more yearbooks on lawns. I know Ancestry has a lot. My Heritage has a lot. Um, By My Past has them, Family Search. So we're seeing collections out there of these. But we can also find them at Dead Fred. And it's, it's worth the effort to check each site because you never know what they might have that somebody else doesn't have. So this is a really, um, you know, just clicking on the annuals to see kind of what they have here. And I was going to drop down here and show you one here. Here's one. This is 1908. It's Sites and Insights, um, Salem College in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So if I click on that, it gives me all the pages out of there. I mean, it, you can see they have 14 pages for this with the different photographs. Now, something that's really interesting, I mean, they have all of these group photos. They have lots of group photos because of, of the classes. But then they also have, um, let me see what this one was, the trustees and the faculty. So, again, we're seeing, you know, people who were teachers, who were um, part of the administration. So if you had an ancestor who was in education, this would be a place to look. Now, the other thing to think about if you found an ancestor in one of these yearbooks is that this is actually um, originally in a, 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 has, is affiliated with the Moravian Church. So if I found my ancestor there, then I probably need to look perhaps into those church records. It might give me some an indication as to a little bit more about her. Um, it is also a, an all women's school. Another key thing. So these are great places to look 
again, looking at those female ancestors, you might be able to find them inside some of the yearbooks. So, you know, take take time to peruse what they might have in their listings here as well as the other sites too. Now, for any of you who have looked at my um, identify, uh, identify that your ancestor in that unknown photograph ebook that I have, it is, I talk about, one of the strategies we talk about is the photographer. When we're trying to identify photographs, maybe figure out where they were taken to be able to place that person in a certain location at a time period. If we know the photographer, the person who took the photograph, we can actually research that photographer. And that's a really big help to do. So I took a look at this one. These are alphabetical. So they have, a, he has a ton of them here. Um, so when I clicked on Acker, I thought, okay, this is interesting. So we have a photographer by the name of, of Acker in New York. We have one in Iowa and Illinois. This could or could not be the same person because these guys would travel sometimes. But if I know that I have a photograph and it has a photographer's imprint of Acker, and I know that I'm researching mostly New York, I'm probably going to look at this one and not so much that third one down there, Dorothy. So if I click on this, I have this beautiful picture of a woman from New York and New York City. I have an approximate date range for this and I can know a little bit more about it um, and click over on it. So again, it, it's just another way of researching. Sometimes you can compare. If you have multiple photographs taken by the same photographer, you can compare them and determine some dates and ages as well on that. So um, just wanted to give you guys that particular um, bit of information when it comes to searching on dead Fred, use all of the search terms, go beyond just searching for that surname or typing in the surname that you're looking for. Make sure you're really looking to see what else is in there for you guys. So let me come back over cause I can't see my comments here real quick um, to see. So again, if you have questions or comments about that and want to add any tips, if you've had any tips, has anybody used dead bread? Let me just ask that up front. So, um, and I'm going to check for other questions here. We have Susan, Susan from Florida. Hey, Lydia. Hey, Rosemary from Tampa. Kim said, and if you find a family photograph, photo, how do you attach it? Mary Jane had that same question. So there, oh, and how to add photographs. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Let me go back over there and show you. Whoops. Let me hit that share button again. Let me find it again. Cause that is a good. Okay. So if you go through and you find a photograph, um, so if you want to post your own photos, you can post your photos right here. If you want to, I'm going to go back to that tall, but example I use, cause since I know that it's there, Unfortunately, I've never found any that were actually mine. So that was always sad, but let's see what we have here. Um, okay, so it is a digital image. I would contact the submitter to maybe get a good copy of it. I mean, you can, you know, just download, I guess, but I would actually, they have a submitter button here on the bottom. You can contact that person to see um, what, if you can get a copy of it. You can also click to see if there are other records by the same person. So if I know that person is submitting a lot on Talbots, what I find is that they're, this is the only one they've posted, but you can click there to find out. So I would do that. And then there was another, I wanted to show you, there is a site, a spot on here that absolutely addresses your ancestors. If you find a photo of your ancestor, let me see if I can find it again. Okay. Do, 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 do. There is something. Ah, does anybody? I'm going to ask you guys. Have you guys had any um, experience with that? Because it seems like I have seen. Okay, here we go. This little area right here says anyone who finds a photo of a direct ancestor that is owned by the archive will receive the photo for free. So that if somebody has found that photograph and donated it to the archive of Dead Fred, then you would receive that photograph for free is what they're indicating. Sometimes what people will do is just they, you know, they retain possession of it, but they'll upload the image. 
So I would actually reach out to that submitter to see if it's possible to get, you know, um, I find pretty good copies on here, but you might want to get a better copy and see what's how that looks for you there as well. So that's exactly what I would do. All right, let's see. Yes, you can add, I showed where to, Mary Jane how to add that picture. Oh, Danny, don't worry about being late. We're glad, we're just glad that you're here. Oh, for the webinar tomorrow. So the webinar, it does start tomorrow at noon and it should go plan on like an hour, I may go an hour and a quarter. Um, and it will be recorded for, um, in a, the, the replay will be available, but not unlimited. So you can watch the replay up through February 12th. So I'll, once I do the webinar, I will actually email all the registrants and let them have the link to the replay and that'll be available um, through the 12th. So yeah, so if you can't come or if you have to duck out early, no worries, you won't miss the information. You can get that. So would love for you to do. Susan says she found two pictures on there. That's great. And Lydia's used it and hasn't found anything. Lydia, see, I haven't found anything either, like specific photos of my ancestors, but I have found when I was doing photo researching photographers marks and photographers to find out like where they were in business at at what time period to in order to narrow dates down on my ancestor. So that I, I've used it in kind of that research mode as opposed to actually finding my ancestor there, but it was a fabulous, a really fabulous, fabulous site. Yeah, Jennifer said, look in the, the frequently asked questions if you have questions about like when you find a photograph that you want to have on that. Um, Sherry looks at it, but hadn't found anything yet. And Kathy's found three that it is very hit or miss because it uh, is so much user submitted but um, it's, it's definitely worth keeping our eyes on and um, looking looking for that those photographs. I like trying to kind of get, I didn't realize that they had the, the yearbooks or the annuals on there. And I think that's such a really nice way to look at it too, because I can keep an eye on that as well to see what's there. Because I think yearbooks and annuals can be such an important part when it comes to finding photographs of our ancestors. But even beyond that, you know, if you find your ancestor in a particular yearbook and, and then start to understand the school, you know, what was that school? What was that college? You know, was it all women or was it co-ed? Was it men only? Was it associated with a church? Could that be a clue to the religious um, bent of your family? Obviously, it didn't have to be, but it could be. So I like to use those kinds of these kinds of tools, even though it's, we think of it as a photo archive and a an orphan photo site, sometimes they call it. It is a place to use actually as part of your research as well. Uh, Susan said, what's the best way to search the mystery section? Let's pop back over and do that. Okay, let me just share that screen again one more time for you. And I will pop over because sometimes it's, I, I do think it's a little hard sometimes to do. So here we go. All right, so let me go up to this mystery section. So we can go here or a lot of times I just go over on this column and click mystery. So there are a couple ways to do things. So it tells us you can browse um, or you can do, you can increase the broader your increase, the broader your search terms. In other words, the less information you fill in, sometimes the more results you'll get. Now you might have to sift through a lot and have to play around with it, but I might do something like, Maybe I'm looking for 1901 to 1920. I'm looking in the US. I'm going to look in, um, all right, let's try North Carolina. And maybe we're going to look in Wake County. Wake is the big county, so it should be, let's see what we find there. And then I just hit submit. And you can, narrow it down. Well, that's no fun when you can't find anything. All right, let's try again. Let's go with, um, I think I'm gonna leave that open. I am going to go super, super broad. Where did I did a search earlier today and, and it did not give me any, I found I had a really good sample for you got of uh, no wonder that's, that's wrong. Virginia. Let's try Virginia because there's a lot there. Let's put in that county. I'm going to try a different county. Halifax County photo type. Let's just keep it really broad and see if we can find something that way. 
and submit. You can, like if you're looking for just males, you could narrow it down to males or females. I'm just trying to get a hit here to see if we can get anything. Ah, oh, this is driving me crazy. Usually I'll find something here on that. So I don't know why I'm not getting anything today. What did I, I did a search on, yeah, I did a search. State abbreviation, I'll try that again. I did it on Pittsylvania. I found it on Pennsylvania County. I know. It's so. Did I spell that right? Yes. Ah, they've gone it because they when I did a search on that. But that would be how you would do. Go in, start putting in your various, um, put in your various parameters and see what you get. I think that's really crazy that I didn't get anything because I typically do when I put those in. Um, Kim said, do people in Europe use this? I'm not really all that sure about that, guys. Your mother came as a World War II war bride and her whole family is over there. And you have pics you could post and tell who they are. Is this U.S. only? That is an excellent question. Let me pop over there and see if I can find out if it is U.S. only. And we will see. You know what? I, I'm pretty sure I've seen Canadian photos on here. Let, I'm going to go, I'm just going into the, the frequently asked questions guys to see if it says, um, da, 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 da. if anybody knows the answer off the top of their head, I would love it if you would pop it in the chat and then we will, um, if I don't, I'm not seeing it right off the bat, but what I can do is, um, I can email them and ask them how that works. Does anybody know? Let's see. Kim said, might be the strength of the internet with us. It's video. It's like putting an orange through a straw. Yeah, sometimes that does happen. I do have a lot of folks here on my, my internet, unfortunately. Um, it is a free site, Barb. They do take donations. If you wanted to be a member, you, they do take, you know, donations because it is, he runs it for free. So yes, that would be, it is pretty much free. Um, there are photos from Australia in mystery. Perfect. Yeah, Anita. Thank you. Yes, I think they do. It does tend to be, I think, U.S. centric on this, but I do think they take other um, sites, other countries as well. And I'll, I'll make a note. I'll reach out to them and ask them to get that so I can get that answer a little quicker for you guys on that. Kim said strength, pictures take a lot of pixels to add. Yes. Yeah, so I may not have been getting many um, of those results because there could be a bigger drain. I didn't even think about that. Thank you, Kim, for that. Um, I forgot that um, somebody in my house might be um, in a meeting as well. So that might that might be why I wasn't getting those results. So thank you for that. And thank you for being patient, guys. As you know, this is live. and I never quite know what's going to happen on this. Um, so take some time and, you know, explore the photographs and just see what you see there. Um, it, you, Another nice way to you, the reason I like to go over there is when I find photographs, I, I study the clothing and the styles and the fashions because that always helps to strengthen my ability to identify and date my own old family photographs, you know, helping me, uh, just helping me to kind of continue my own personal education of understanding hairstyles and, you know, clothing and, and any kind of variations that might be there. So that's a, that's a way that I do like to, um, do when I have time. I just I just like to go and peruse the site that's over there. So um, I would encourage you guys to do that. Um, thank you guys so much for um, hanging with me today and this afternoon. I do love to enjoy coming and chatting with you guys. Um, don't forget Roots Tech is this month. It um, It's the 25th through the 27th. It is virtual and it is free. So just go over and register. Love it. If you guys... Um, Oh, good. Jennifer said she typed in Germany and they have a lot of Germany pictures, a number of pictures over there. So, yes, we are international on on that. I will put in the registration again for um, the webinar that I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, again, it is at 12 noon Eastern time. I just wanted to reiterate that because I know a lot of times I do things later in the day, um, but I needed to do it just a tad earlier. Yes, for tomorrow. It will be, go ahead and register. Even if you cannot attend live, go ahead and register because then you'll get the email for the replay on it. And um, 
again, you'll be able to, if you can't go live, totally understand, or if you want to pop in late, that's perfectly fine as well. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. If I find the answer on Europe, I uh, thank you so much. Great, Kim. I love it. Appreciate that. I will do that. I will email you and let you know. Um, Barb, missed the information on the webinar tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I just popped it in. Um, the link just, just now just popped it in. So it should pop up. It is a free webinar, Barb, on finding female ancestors in their clubs and societies. So I'm going to just be doing kind of a masterclass on looking at um, finding those and how to, how to find those societies. And um, it should be, you know, stick with me. I don't know. Um, you know, I think 60 minutes to an hour and a quarter, maybe a little bit longer too. There will be a replay if you can't make it live, but I do need you to register. I need you to pre-register for this one for my planning purposes. So if you guys can um, just register at that link, that would be great. It is free. There's a limited time period for watching the replay though. So just want to let you guys know that. Um, you guys are welcome. I'm sure he's heading over there to see what's going on. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad glad to, um, that you're going to be there and can join me tomorrow. Enjoy um, enjoy the site. See what you can find and, and, and hop around. Love it. If you guys find something really cool over there, if you find a photograph, feel free to, you know, let us know in the, um, come back to the Facebook group and let us, or Facebook page and let us know because it would be really interesting. All right, guys, have a great day and I will see you here next week. Bye.